season. 12 News at 10 starts right now. Now at 10 o'clock, family and friends coming together to pray for a teen who is fighting to live after he was hit by an SUV while simply riding his bike. Tonight, the man suspected of being behind the wheel at the time of this crash near 47th Avenue and Northern is behind bars. That is where we start this Sunday night here on 12 News at 10 o'clock. Thanks so much for spending time with us. I'm Jonathan McCall. Tonight, that teen in serious condition with several critical injuries. 12 News journalist Gabriela Becerra at a vigil held tonight for that teen, sharing with how he's doing and what we're now learning about that driver. Gabby. The teen 13 year old Eli Bizzle is still in the hospital with serious injuries, including a fractured skull and several broken bones. His family and friends gathering at this intersection to pray for his recovery. Illuminated with candles in the setting sun. Just just for Eli. Dozens of people gathered in red at the corner of 47th Avenue and Northern. I'm not the only one hurting, it's the whole community. The same intersection where 13 year old Eli Bizzle was hit by a car on Thursday evening. My son is fighting for his life. We are not in the clear. Glendale police say Eli and his friends were crossing the street on their bikes when a car hit and seriously injured the teen. All he was doing was being a kid and riding his bike. He knew he had to come home before the lights were on. Police say the driver identified as 27 year old Joshua Holbert initially took off but turned himself in after police seized his truck and searched his apartment. Court records reveal Holbert, who has a history of reckless driving, admitted to hitting the teen and driving off. He didn't deserve this. No one deserves it. At the center of Sunday's prayer circle, Eli's mom, Victoria Bizzle. My, my world has been torn upside down. Telling us she finds some relief in this arrest, but says she won't be okay until her son makes a full recovery. Justice is going to be served, and I want to make sure that no other parent goes through what I'm going through because this is torture. It is pure torture to see your 13-year-old laying so helpless and you can't do nothing about it. Court records reveal Holbert was not under the influence at the time of the crash. He's facing one felony charge. Reporting in Glendale, Gabriella Becerra, 12 News. Everybody making sure that Eli makes a full recovery. Gabby, thanks so much. New at 10 o'clock tonight, right now, Phoenix police searching for answers in a deadly stabbing near 51st Avenue in McDowell. This is video of that scene just into the 12 newsroom tonight. In just the last 20 minutes, police say that a woman called 911 this afternoon saying that she stabbed another woman. When officers got to that home, they found 75 year old Ruby Pittman dead. Police say the woman who called them told officers that she was indeed responsible for the murder. Detectives say both women are related, but did not specify how. The incident tonight still under investigation. We'll follow the story for you overnight while you sleep at 12news.com and have the very latest tomorrow morning on Today in AZ starting at 426. Developing tonight, one person is dead, five others hurt after a car plowed into a home in Peoria overnight. Investigators tonight trying to figure out if speed or impairment played a role. This scene unfolding near Vistancia Boulevard and Lone Mountain Parkway. Investigators say the five people hurt in the crash, suffering life-threatening injuries. No one inside of that home was hurt. Tonight, 12 News staying in contact with police to try to learn the names of those involved. Now to the latest on Arizona's abortion debate, which is once again expected to heat up this week. Today in Scottsdale, hundreds of folks marching in Old Town and outside of Fashion Square Mall, calling for an end to Arizona's Civil War era abortion ban that could go into effect in a matter of weeks. Organizers also using the event to collect signatures for a petition that would let voters decide the future of abortion in Arizona in November's election. Women want to have the choice, I want to have reproductive freedom. And what that means is that it's between us and our doctor. It is between us and medical professionals to decide whether or not we carry a child to term. That's what we want. That's what we're putting on the ballot in November to fight for our rights. After the Arizona Supreme Court's ruling last week, Arizona Representative Matt Gress called for a vote to repeal the law, but instead the House voted to adjourn. Under the Supreme Court ruling, that 1864 law would take effect in June. Meanwhile, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly is urging state Republicans to try to figure out a way to repeal that law soon. This morning on CBS's Face the Nation, Kelly placed blame for what's happening right now 
at the feet of former President Donald Trump and Arizona Republicans. He said that he expects the issue to be a major factor at the polls in November, but he says right now his focus simply on protecting women if the law goes into effect. Well, my first concern is women in Arizona and their and their health. And uh, women could die from this 1864 ruling that once again was enabled by the former president. So that's my biggest concern. Uh, we're going to have an election in November. I imagine we're going to have large turnout because of this issue. Uh, I also want to point out, Margaret, that I don't think this represents who we are uh, in the state of Arizona. This is a moment in time. We're going to get through this. We, we have an opportunity to fix this uh, in November. Wednesday, the Arizona House will be back in session to discuss possibly repealing that 1864 near total abortion ban upheld by the Supreme Court last week. 12 News will have complete live team coverage on Wednesday's session on air and online at 12news.com. Now to the latest developments from the Middle East and today President Joe Biden attending a video call with G7 leaders after Iran's attack on Israel yesterday. Leaders condemning the attack that saw some 300 drones and missiles launched. In a joint statement, leaders say that it stands in solidarity with Israel and its people and that they will continue to work to stabilize the situation to avoid further escalation. Leaders also said that they will look to strengthen their cooperation to end the crisis in Gaza. Looking ahead to tomorrow, jury selection is set to get underway first thing in the morning in the first of four criminal trials involving former President Donald Trump. Prosecutors say that before the 2016 presidential election, Trump tried to cover up money paid to porn actress Stormy Daniels to keep quiet about an alleged 2006 affair the two had. NBC News has learned that some 6,000 New Yorkers have been summoned as potential jurors in the case. Prospective jurors will have to answer more than 60 questions, including their news sources that they read and watch and whether they've attended a Trump rally or follow him on social media. Also on Monday, 12 News is on Water Watch. Too many tragedies in such a short amount of time. As we continue our coverage, 12 News wants to keep you and your family safe around water throughout the year. Download the free 12 News app for a complete list of resources along with drowning prevention tips. You can also head to 12news.com waterwatch for more.